And for more insights, we're now joined by Ambassador Rajiv Bakia, the Distinguished Fellow at the Foreign Policy Studies Program at Gateway House Indian Council on Global Relations. Now, Ambassador, BRICS leaders uh, adopted a joint declaration following the summit in Kazan. Uh, what of that declaration stood out for you most? The, the most important uh, uh, point probably uh, relates to uh, reiteration of the BRICS uh, spirit, uh, which uh, really is uh, the sense of solidarity and decision-making by consensus by this very important uh, plurilateral platform. But besides, I think uh, there is a clear uh, disclosure about uh, uh, how the uh, grouping uh, wants to go ahead with the expansion of uh, this uh, institution. Uh, they have taken the view that uh, there is a need to have a new category, uh, category of dialogue partners uh, for BRICS. So that is very important. And thirdly, uh, as you yourself pointed out right in the beginning, there is uh, a decision that uh, uh, in terms of the trade transactions, the use of local currencies will be supported and encouraged. And going beyond that, uh, what happens to what is popularly known as the BRICS currency that would remain uh, under consideration by the finance ministers of BRICS. Now, talking about that new payment system, how big of a deal is that among the members and what kind of impact could it have? Uh, this will need uh, further study and uh, examination. Uh, as you know, the declaration named as the Kazan Declaration has just been uh, issued. Uh, but what is clear is that uh, very... Uh, uh, very evidently, the members uh, want to, to use uh, local currencies to the extent possible because that system is uh, fast and safe and secure and inexpensive. And obviously, in this context, the use of digital technology or digitech, as we call it, will be uh, promoted as much as possible. So it is significant, but how significant? That will have to be still studied and examined by the experts. Now as, we, now, as we know, the BRICS countries are among the world's largest producers of grains. But can Mr. Putin's idea of a grain exchange system actually benefit the group's members? It is quite possible that uh, there would be progress uh, in that direction. I think we have to recognize that BRICS is emerging uh, as a platform uh, for the uh, emerging markets and developing economies. They call themselves EMDCs. And here they are particularly focused on protecting the interests of the developing countries, uh, the real members of the Global South. So they are suffering from uh, you know, the increased prices of uh, food uh, and fuel and fertilizers. So in that context, uh, the grain exchange program uh, and also other measures to improve agricultural production and uh, trading in agriculture, this I think uh, would be uh, signif significant aspects of economic cooperation among BRICS member states. Now, as we reported, there were many issues that were raised in the declaration, but the war in Ukraine was hardly mentioned in the final declaration. Why do you think that's so? Uh, to be... Uh, uh, factual, actually, the word Ukraine has been mentioned in the declaration. Uh, essentially, the relevant paragraph says uh, that uh, the member states reiterated their national positions, but they went all on to say that, um, you know, uh, conflicts have to be resolved through uh, dialogue and diplomacy and peaceful negotiations, and that... Uh, while doing this, there is a need to study the root causes of the conflicts as well. So this is the best they could achieve through consensus. As you know, Russia is uh, uh, a premier member of BRICS. Uh, it is uh, the party involved in the Ukraine conflict. So this was the best uh, kind of consensus that could be developed while retaining the solidarity and unity of BRICS. Now, this summit in Russia gave Vladimir Putin the opportunity to flaunt his nation's standing on the world stage despite Western efforts to ostracize uh, Moscow over its war in Ukraine. Why are some countries still supportive and willing to work with Putin? 
Well, this is the heart of the question. Um, I think the answer to this is that, um, you know, uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict uh, looks different when viewed from the US and Europe to what uh, it looks uh, from Asia and Africa. Undoubtedly, there is a conflict. Undoubtedly, there is a violation of the UN Charter. Uh, and therefore, there is a need uh, for finding uh, an acceptable solution to this conflict. But uh, this cannot be done uh, on the battlefields. This cannot be done through continuation of war, through pumping of arms uh, in an unlimited fashion. And that is the reason why the Indian Prime Minister and others have been stressing that uh, the combating countries should sit down around a table and start discussing a way forward. So we have to appreciate that uh, this is not the first time nation states are fighting a war. They have done through their history. But it is also true that no war uh, can continue indefinitely. So the, the message from BRICS, a combined message, is that Ukraine war must also be brought to an end. And that is only possible when uh, the countries sit around a table and talk to each other in a constructive manner. Ambassador, thank you so much for your insights. And we've been speaking to Ambassador Rajiv Bhatia, Distinguished Fellow at the Pleasure. Foreign Policy Studies Program, Gateway House.